tell us more about the brainstem vermis angle and the brainstem tentorium angles. Good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, I would like to uh, thank and appreciate uh, Kushboos and her team for uh, bringing on this uh, education initiative and uh, also our leader, Dr. Ashok, for uh, doing such a wonderful job of moderating the session. Now, coming to uh, the angles. Now, if you go, am I audible? Yeah. So, when we go to the history of posterior fossa, so we all, uh, we started, senior people, we, uh, the posterior fossa abnormality, we said uh, uh, the, uh, it has always been subjective. We said uh, the cerebellar hemispheres were uh, hypoplastic and the vermis was not seen. Then you diagnose the antimacron. Then we found the mid sagittal scan came and uh, we saw that the vermis was there and it was rotated. So in the axial scan, it was not seen. So then we came to uh, recognize the other conditions of uh, uh, previously called uh, Dandy Walker variant, now called the vermin hypoplasia and the Blake's pouch cyst, and uh, described them in the axial uh, scans uh, uh, by their appearance uh, subjectively. And then next, the mid sagittal scan, which also uh, were uh, described subjectively. But uh, uh, now everything is towards objectivity in uh, interpretation. So the, uh, like any other region, the brainstem vermis and brainstem tentorial angles came in. So here, uh, the brainstem vermis angle, uh, on all the angles, are, uh, both the angles are uh, measured in the mid sag section of the uh, posterior fossa and the uh, skull. So the mid sagittal scan, uh, we measure the uh, one line is drawn through the posterior surface of the brain stem and uh, the second line is uh, drawn through the anterior uh, uh, plane of the vermis. So the, the angle formed by these two lines is called the brain stem vermis angle and uh, uh, the measurements uh, uh, described normal is up to about 25 uh, 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 degrees and then uh, 25 uh, to uh, say about uh, uh, 30 degrees is brain, I mean the Blake's pouch cyst. And then uh, we have the uh, up to 30 to 45 degrees is the vermian hypoplasia along with the morphology of the vermis. And then above 45, even though when I'm simplified in a simple way, tell only the single values, there is a range, uh, the uh, <coughs> for Blake's pouch cyst, it is from 23 plus or minus uh, 3, uh, uh, 3 degrees and uh, vermin hyperplasia 35 plus or minus 5 and then uh, Dandy Walker uh, more than uh, that is uh, 63 plus or minus 17. So this is the range. So any measurement will have a range but roughly uh, it is uh, uh, 20, less than 25, 25 to 30, 30 to 45 and above 45. Coming to the brainstem vermis angle, uh, this is a little uh, difficult and uh, some uh, amount of subjectivity comes in identification of the uh, tentorium because it is not clear. In the MRI, they definitely identified by the insertion of the uh, muscles uh, as the point uh, of uh, the tentorium, but in ultrasound, it is a little difficult, but still it is described. And uh, this is the angle between the brain stem. The line one is the same, but uh, the second line is drawn through the uh, tentorium. And uh, with the brain stem tentorium angle of uh, uh, normal is up to 45 degrees and more than 45, it is said to be elevated and indicative of uh, uh, the uh, Dandy Walker anomaly. So the, the ten, ten, brainstem tentorium angle is uh, to use to identify or differentiate the uh, dandy walker anomaly from the lesser variants. So what the brain the angles have done is to bring in objectivity to uh, describe or uh, differentiate these three conditions. Thank you.